Well, we've made it here on game day, September 5th, with my final college football team-by-team -team preview. Thought about the Auburn Tigers from the SEC West, coming from arguably the toughest division in all of college football. Two years ago, Gus Malzahn and the Tigers had that incredible run, winning the SEC and coming within a few seconds of a national championship. And a year ago, Auburn won their first five ball games and ended up winning you know, seven of their first eight. And then, yeah, they hit the skids, and they did so in many uh, different facets. Of course, against Texas A&M, some uh, costly turnovers late doomed them. And against Georgia, bad offense. Against Alabama, you know, even worse defense. And against the Wisconsin Badgers, a little bit of everything, including some uh, missed field goals that costed Auburn a shot at winning against the Badgers. So 8-5 and five to finish the season. That's right, they lost four of their final five games, but most of the defense had too many issues, and they gave up a lot of big pass plays. We'll talk about that later. So first of all, talk about the offense for Gus Malzahn's squad under the offensive coordinator leadership of Brett um, Lashley. Auburn will have a new quarterback. Well, he's not completely new. After all, Jeremy Johnson did play in the opener last year. You might remember when uh, quarterback Nick Marshall was suspended for the season opener. Auburn, of course, had to open up their year with an SEC game against a decent team in Arkansas, who turned out to be really good at the end of the year. Well, in that game, Jeremy Johnson, now a junior, really lit Arkansas up for 12 and 16 passing and two touchdowns. So we saw that Johnson, his arm is pretty good. And that's the one thing that he might have a uh, you know better advantage in than Nick Marshall. It looks like to me that Jeremy Johnson is the more polished passer. Now, as far as running the ball being quick, which is where Marshall was, more, was a, a dangerous quarterback, does Johnson have those same qualities? Right now, it doesn't seem like he does, but I do believe he can be mobile when it calls for it. Remember, you know, Auburn's going to run um, multiple formations, no huddle, um, you know, as well as hurry-up style. So I think, you know, Jeremy Johnson, you know, with two years left to go, Auburn's pretty high on him. The ground game. Now, before you think that this ground game isn't going to be as good because they lose, you know, a terrific rusher in Kim and Artis Payne and also in Corey Grant, remember the year before, you know, last year, Auburn probably wondered the same thing, or those skeptics wondered the same thing when they had to replace their all-everything running back in Trey Mason. And last year they answered those questions. This year, um, can they be another terrific ground game? Well, if you believe in trends, more than likely. Um, you know, Rock Thomas, you know, they'll give him the rock quite a bit, if you will. You know, at 5'10", at uh, 203, um, definitely filled uh, with plenty of explosiveness. And you get him back, but also the addition of, um, of a Jovan Robinson, you know, a junior college offensive player of the year. A little bit bigger at six feet even and uh, 220 pounds. Um, he will be a load to try to bring down. And, again, you get here from the JUCO ranks. Peyton Barber, a part of the rotation as well. At the H-back, you'll have Cameron Petway. So for Auburn, there's plenty of quality there. It's not as experienced, but remember last year, it wasn't as experienced either, and we saw that Auburn's ground attack was one of the best in the country, seventh in rushing nationwide. Um, if you're looking at the passing game, last year, Auburn was very efficient in this area, one of the highest passing efficiency rates in the country, and we didn't know if Duke Williams was even going to be a part of opening day, which, by the way, is in just a few hours against Louisville. Uh, you know, Duke Williams has had some uh, off-the-field issues, and we didn't see him for part of practice. But it looks like um, if he can keep his head on straight, the worst is behind him. It looks like he'll play um, in the opener and throughout the season at 6'2", 224, a physical type receiver. You know, Duke Williams is no question going to be the number one guy for Johnson to throw to. But you have other experience as well with Melvin Ray, um, also too, and Marcus Davis, and um, you'll also have Ricardo Lewis. So you return four of your top six receivers. And Auburn's offensive line, you know, for the most part should be set, although you lose probably the best lineman in the country from a year ago, um, the uh, center, and he was, no question, a big part of that team. Reese Dismukes, the Remington winner, um, first-team All-American. So, you know, experience like that along with right guard Chad uh, Slate, that's going to be difficult to replace. But you do return some other experience, and that, of course, uh, will mean um, at the left tackle position, um, you'll have uh, Coleman back, uh, Sean Coleman. And the uh, left guard position for Auburn, uh, you'll have uh, Alex Cozon. Between those two guys, 27 combined starts. At the center position, the guy is going to have a lot of pressure on him because, of course, of the departure of uh, the Smukes, and that is uh, Austin Golston. 
Um, by the way, you know, he's, he's a transfer from Ole Miss, but he still has three years of eligibility to go. He's a sophomore. And at the Gretkar position, another sophomore, that's Braden Smith. And rounding out the Auburn uh, lineup in terms of the down lineman, right tackle in Avery Young, 25 starts. That's right, 25 of 27 games he has started, and this is his junior year. So talk about reliability there at right tackle, and you'll have to tie it in in Jalen Harris. Now, looking at the defensive side, the biggest addition, in my opinion, was not a player. It was a coach, and he's coming back. That is Will Muschamp, who 10 years ago uh, was a defensive coordinator for Auburn. And of course, we know at Texas in 08 and 09 how good that defense was, especially in 09 because Texas got to the national championship game. And in my opinion, defense was a big reason why. At Florida, it didn't pan out for him as a head coach, sure. But even as a head coach, when Florida was mediocre under his leadership, the defense was always terrific. So it is a big pick-me-up for Will Muschamp to come back um, to Auburn, but this time just to focus on defense. And in my opinion, defensive coordinator, that's his forte, not necessarily head coach. Um, on that defensive side, um, you return the majority of the talent. We're, you know, we're talking about uh, Devontae Lambert at one defensive end, you know, seven tackles for a loss a year ago for the senior. And then complimenting on the other side, the defensive end with a buck position, um, that's going to be uh, Carl Lawson, who played 11 of 13 games last year. You will see Auburn primarily run a 4-3 type defense. And um, at the defensive tackles, you're going to have a couple of guys who coincidentally their first names sound alike. At one defensive tackle, um, Dontavious uh, Russell, uh, just a red shirt freshman, so he will get his feet wet this season. And uh, Montavious um, Adams, you'll have him at uh, the other defensive tackle spot. So right there, plenty of experience coming back. And looking at the linebackers, um, this is not only going to be a good group, but they'll have a good rotation as well. Casanova, McKenzie, his senior year. He's been around, of course, he was around for that SEC championship team from two years ago. And uh, Chris Frost complimenting him, you know, with 87 tackles, leading tackle returner amongst the front seven, including three and a half sacks. Don't forget about Trey Williams, and another linebacker, and Justin Garrett. They'll be a part of that rotation as well. There's plenty of depth for Auburn at linebacker, but the biggest concern I have for the Tigers is going to be that defensive front because they only have four guys returning and five of the eight that they have as far as the defensive line, five of those eight are, are freshmen. Three of them are true freshmen. So if they get in injuries, you know, even a single injury of significance on that front, um, you're going to have to rely on guys, you know, who didn't play last year. So that's something to really, um, to really watch for could be a concern. The uh, secondary, well, for the most part, going to be okay. Okay, you've had uh, one corner returning and uh, Jonathan Jones, um, you know, a senior, not very tall, 5'10", but um, very impactful uh, for his experience. And the other guy at the corner, Blake Countess. If that name sounds familiar to Big Ten fans, it should because he used to play for Michigan. So he enters his final year, now an Auburn Tiger. Speaking of transfers, um, this is a pretty big name. Uh, talking about Trey Matthews. You know, this is now his sophomore year, but two years ago, he not only played in the SEC for Georgia, but he was a part of that play two years ago. Coincidentally, um, you know, when it was Auburn versus Georgia, he was actually on the field in the vicinity of that fourth and long play late when Auburn was trailing and they, you know, needed the first down, needed the touchdown, and that deflected pass, which Auburn ended up catching. You know, Matthews was actually in the mix of that, and he was on the wrong side of it. And, of course, Auburn, that was one of those two games at the end of the regular season that they needed to win, and they did in dramatic fashion. And, unfortunately, Matthews was on the wrong side of the field uh, for that one. But now he plays for Auburn, and um, he's eligible now because of the fact that you know, two years ago he got kicked off uh, Georgia because he tried to cash in a couple of uh, cash scholarships twice, and that was over for his days in Athens. But now um, he's at Auburn. And the other safety, you have uh, Jonathan Ford, uh, just a junior. And I, I do believe that this defense will be better just because, first of all, there's experience, but secondly, Will Muschamp, this guy is Mr. Intense, if you've ever seen him coach before, and I think that will translate to his team playing with more emotion. Special teams, no problem. You return uh, Daniel Carlson. He plays kicks, he punts, and he kicks. He does everything but the dishes, 42 yards per punt. And field goal-wise, um, 18 of 24 for 75%, uh, but most of his misses occurred uh, you know, from 40 yards onward. His leg's pretty good, but his accuracy needs to be a little bit better. Now, to take a look at the schedule for the Tigers. Their first game, coincidentally, uh, will be shortly, just a few hours, as I'm broadcasting this um, you know, show on a Saturday morning, September 5th. Louisville Cardinals under Petrino. 
you know, Louisville has um, a tendency to score points, and they will, um, you know, I think present a bit of a challenge to Auburn, but I think the Tigers in the second half pull away. That game, neutral site in Atlanta. Third game of the season, that's the conference opener at LSU. A year ago, it was all Auburn in the game between the two Tiger squads. But two years ago, that was Auburn's only loss, and of course, that was at Baton Rouge, where they'll play on the 19th. September 26, Mississippi State, they shouldn't be as good. They do return the quarterback, Dak Prescott, but have a colossal amount of players to replace. That game's at Auburn, should be a win. And then Kentucky on a Thursday night, October the 15th, they should handle them. October 24th, got to go play at Arkansas. Razorbacks are going to be better than they were a year ago. And then Halloween, you host Old Miss, and that will be a formidable challenge. But it looks like the month of November, that is the make it or break it month. Remember, this was the month that Auburn faltered a year ago. Will it happen again? November 7th, you got to go to A&M to beat Auburn in the heartbreaker a year ago. And then rounding it out, Georgia, highly anticipated matchup with the Bulldogs. It was all Georgia last year in Athens, but they play them at Auburn this time. And we return to the scene of one of the greatest games of all time. That was two years ago at Jordan Hare. Of course, Chris Davis becoming a hero in the final play of the game in Auburn beating Alabama. Last year, though, it was the Crimson Tide winning. They scored 55 points. So we'll see what gives this time at Auburn between Alabama and Auburn. I think with the amount of talent that Auburn has coming back, and I think that Jeremy Johnson is an underrated quarterback, offensive line, they may not be as great as last year, but they still should be good enough. I think the ground game is going to surprise people. Receiving core set, and I think the addition of Will Muschamp gives Auburn the edge in the SEC West, which is why I'm picking them to win the division. I do think there will be a loss somewhere along the way, though. Um, it could happen sometime in the month of November because the schedule will get tougher once you get into the latter part of it. But I look for Auburn to win the SEC with a 12-1 record, and I look for them to get all the way to the national championship game, but I think Ohio State beats them in the end. That does it for my preview of Auburn. Thank you for watching all my team-by-team -team previews. As we now get ready um, for next week, we'll have college football picks, and throughout the season, um, we'll have post-games of uh, Oklahoma Center football. Thanks for watching.